We're talking today to Poonam Goyle, BI Senior U.S. Retailing Analyst, on her recent focus idea, Adidas. Poonam, year-to-date, Adidas shares have outperformed Puma and Nike by considerable margin, and yet consensus analyst recommendations seem to be much more neutral. What's the street missing, do you think? I think the street is missing that Adidas is undergoing a turnaround and that they have performed better than they have in the past. So we think that's proof that they'll continue to execute and drive that turnaround. But let's just quickly take a look at the numbers. So you, you're absolutely right that Adidas has outperformed its peers, Nike and Puma, this year. In fact, Adidas is up by more than 37% year to date, while Puma is down 7% and Nike is down about 4%. But when you take a look at it versus last year, which kind of sets Adidas up for easier comparisons, Adidas last year was down 51%. And if you look pre-pandemic, Adidas is still down 39%, even though it's up by roughly just that much this year. So clearly a long runway for Adidas. Now, when we talk about the consensus estimates, consensus today is projecting for a mid-single digit decline in Adidas's 2023 sales. Management had guided to a high single digit decline and we are estimating a low single digit decline. Our optimism comes from just everything we've seen year to date by the execution of their new CEO. And we think that he continues to really put his best foot forward, driving innovation, driving more sports sponsorships. In fact, Adidas in the upcoming World Cup, the Women's World Cup that's this summer, is going to be sponsoring 10 of the 32 teams where they can really showcase their product and drive meaningful impressions with their audience. Now, Puno, there's been a change in governance uh, at Adidas. Uh, Bjorn Golden now sitting in the CEO seat. Um, obviously, governance is quite an important part of the, the ESG concept. Uh, the right management team can can generate robust through cycle returns. How important do you think he is to this equity story and how conservative do you think he's being? I think he's everything to this equity story. I think he is the reason for the turnaround taking shape even in early days. He has executed extremely well in his tenure at Puma, doubling sales there. We think if he remains laser focused at Adidas, really focusing once again on sports, focusing in on endorsements, and really on product. We think he can drive this turnaround. He doubled sales at Puma while he was there in his tenure. And at that time, he had much fewer resources than he would have at Adidas today. Great, thanks. And and maybe the final consideration, um, China's consumers. Now, pre-pandemic, they accounted for a material part of luxury and sporting goods sales. Do you think Adidas can regain its former glory with Chinese consumers? And Are we seeing any evidence of that resurrection? Yeah, we are actually. And if you think about just China as a region in all for athleisure companies, it's very, very, very important. China is the growth engine for many of these athleisure brands, especially as a consumer there is really taking a greater hold of sports in their day-to-day lives. So a huge opportunity by the people of China. China has struggled as of recent because of the pandemic and also because of geopolitical tensions. But what we've heard, at least through year to date from other sports uh, brands, is that China is recovering since the reopening. In fact, trends in China are up by double digits across most of the athleisure brands we heard from. Even Adidas is doing better in China. And I can tell you that, you know, we expect China sales for Adidas to return to growth as early as 2Q. And that's quite promising, given um, how China has done for Adidas, where they've really lost share. China used to account to be the number two player um, for Adidas, but it's no longer the case. Anta and Footwear took that lead from China last year. But we do think that Adidas can reclaim its lead in China because of all the innovation that it's going to undertake, especially with the celebrity endorsements that they have, and as well as the growing um, visibility that they're going to have in China through their campaigns, as well as influencers and others. But key to China recovery is really that the consumer is back out, the consumer is back shopping again, and athleisure remains a really important part of that consumer's life that we think can drive China sales. In fact, you know, China only accounted for 14% of Adidas sales last year, and that's small relative to other players. Adidas used to hold more than 20%, to be exact, 22% of of its sales from China prior to last year. So there's a clear opportunity for them to take share up in that region and really drive growth to the bottom line. In fact, you know, our thesis for the low single digit decrease versus consensus at a mid single digit stems from outperformance in China to a large degree. Poonam, thanks very much for your time. Thanks for your insights. Really appreciate it.